HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Hello, and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton Learning Center hosted a bake sale to help out one of their teachers. Town Clerk Connor Deegan took us through ballot machine testing at Town Hall. We caught up with this year's Hillers football captains and Courtney will get you up to date with upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. After about a 90-minute discussion, the planning board approved the Elementary School Building Committee site plan. And we're finding that it's going to comply. Uh, the only discussion that we had on the letter is, is on the on the poll, which would be different. We're finding it complies. We're also defining that exterior lighting of which is number nine under N that this is not considered a recreational facility even though we have playgrounds. So just with the understanding that that this is not does not apply to that because it's a it's a school exercise yard as opposed to a playground I guess. Any further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Okay, the last one is a vote to approve the site plan with all the conditions that Jennifer read and the applicant agreed to. So <coughs> moved. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carried. School will be officially starting for most in Hopkinton next week. Kickoff events took place throughout Hopkinton schools. Hopkinton Middle School hosted their annual Ignite Orientation. Uh, the Ignite Orientation um, is a program started about 10 years ago at the middle school and we have 8th graders that volunteer um, their time um, to mentor 6th graders. So the 6th graders that come into our school um, have eighth grade mentors that help them with the transition into the middle school. Um, it's great because the eighth graders get leadership experience um, that really helps them develop and sixth graders a lot of them you know are nervous coming into a new situation a bigger building a new school um, and they get instant eighth grade friends that have been here for a while and we continue the program throughout the year it's been really successful for eighth graders developing leadership skills and sixth graders making the transition. Center School and Hopkins hosted popsicles with the principal. This is our kindergarten popsicles on the playground. Students have an opportunity to meet classmates. We color code the name tag, so anytime they see a similar name tag, be it a school bus or pencils, they can introduce themselves, meet some new friends, and parents also have the opportunity to meet other parents. Kindergartners are, are new to the school system, most of them, and we also had many families new to Hopkinton, so it's a great opportunity to build connections. Elmwood hosted a scavenger hunt to help students better find various rooms in the school. So at Elmwood School we have an opening day event that is student-led. It's called a scavenger hunt. Um, students come with their families. They don't necessarily go into the classrooms, but they locate the doors. They find um, their spots. They, they Students who would like to are able to come in the front door, kind of manage, okay, this is how I get to my room, this is where I'll go on the first day. They locate things throughout the building, such as a mural in the gymnasium, there's a giant bug on the wall in the library, um, and it just gives kids an opportunity to reconnect with one another, to get sort of wrap around the idea that school will soon begin, and to make some connections with some faces at Elmwood School, so it's a nice sort of first step to the school year. And it's a steep tradition at Elmwood School to conduct it this way. So, With the state primaries coming up in September, it was time to test out the ballot machines at Town Hall. Town Clerk Connor Deegan took us through the meticulous process. 
HCAM was live on Facebook as ahead of the state primary election in September, the ballot machines were tested out. Town manager Connor Deegan filled us in on the process. So essentially what we're doing is just showing that the machines are working at proper capacity, that they're reading all the ballots properly. Uh, it's really just to ensure the public that the machines are working and that there's not going to be any issues on election day. Uh, and it also gives us the addition of seeing how that all the machines are working, all of the cards are working correctly before we actually have to have them out in the field. Now, have these ballots been filled out already to just uh, test and see if the machines are reading them correctly? Yes, these ballots are all filled out, uh, and then we have a spreadsheet set up for what the results should be. And then we see what the, that the results on the tape will match the results of what we put in. So I see four machines here. Are they going to be testing all of them? Yep, we're going to test all of the machines, uh, and then there's a memory chip for each one, and then a spare memory chip for each one as well. So one for each precinct, and then one spare machine. So we're going to test all of the machines with all of the chips. Is this your first time as town clerk going through this process? Yes, it's my first time doing it as town clerk. Um, I had helped uh, Jerry with it once when she was preparing for an election, but otherwise this is the first time doing it as the clerk, yes. Rick McMillan is serving his third presidential race as a warden, and warden Russell Ellsworth has also been around for a couple of years. I'm just, I'm, I'm, one of the, I'm one of the wardens, I guess I would call myself the assistant wardens, and, and historically when there's been ballot testing, uh, the wardens have been present to make sure everything is working chip shape because at the election, we're the ultimate uh, authority in making sure things run all right, along with the town clerk, of course, that everything goes okay. So that's why I'm here. Excellent. How long, how long have you been doing this? Well, I started off as a machine inspector about uh, seven years ago, and I've, I've been a warden, as assistant warden, for about two years now. Cut the machine off and turn it back on, okay. and it'll say. Well, this is insert fully voted ballot, so you said yes to vote fully. I'm a representative with LHS Associates. Um, we actually um, service the AccuVote tabulation system that you guys use for your um, elections. Um, so I'm here just as a customer service um, to Connor, whereas he is a new town clerk. Um, we do offer it um, at no fee to the community, even though the machines have been out in the field for 20 years here, um, to just make him more comfortable with the uh, voting machine, the system, the policies of testing, any questions he may have uh, regarding the testing procedures. So I'm just here as a courtesy. Write-ins have been entered and spots clearly marked where entered. So what this machine does is it will automatically mark ballots for anyone who might not be able to use a marker to actually mark the ballot, whether it be because of a disability. Sometimes uh, it can be as simple as not having full muscle control, or it could be as complex as uh, people who are blind. There's actually braille right along the bottom here and there are headphones to where that will explain how the ballot will work so that you can mark it up even if you can't see it. So it essentially allows for many people who were never able to vote without assistance to vote all on their own. Mm -hmm. now, do they have one of these at every precinct? Or? They have every election hall is required to have at least one. So one will work for all of the different precincts uh, because they're programmed with the chip to work with the ballots that we're given. View a whole lot more video from our live Facebook feed of the ballot machine testing on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash HCAMTV. The Hopkinton Learning Center hosted a bake sale this week. The proceeds went towards teacher Melody Ring for her battle with cancer. Melody has been with the Hopkinton Learning Center for nearly 20 years. The Learning Center of Hopkinton had some delicious treats for sale, 
including cookies and brownies, to raise money for teacher Melody Ring, who is battling cancer. So one of our closest co-workers, she's been here for almost 20 years, um, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Um, back in April, she was brought to the hospital. Um, she had surgeries. She was just diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Um, she's been going through chemotherapy. Um, that hasn't really been working out. She had, she's had a lot of financial issues, and so we're trying to help raise money to help her with medical bills and take care of the house and um, trying to keep her spirits up and keep her spirits so up. Just let know. her know that we're still behind her. We're still here. So this is we're for her. her. No, this is just letting her know that we love her. You know, we're here for her. We're supporting her. We have her back. Yep. And you know. The community is coming out and they're supporting us as well. So we thank you all for coming yes, out and you. donating to us. Uh, we love you, Mel. We love you. Love you. <laughs> A good variety of sweets were made by many various staff and parents. They're all gone. This is it. Sorry. Uh, that was all made by our wonderful parents and staff members. So um, a lot of hard work. Yep. A lot of our staff members were here yesterday cooking, cooking. or cooking at home, and then. Um, a lot of parents brought stuff in for us today, so it's been... Everything's homemade and yummy, so if you <laughs> buy some, we might have some leftovers. We have so much. Teacher Lauren McIntosh mentioned she worked with Melody for three years as her co-teacher. So Melody was one of our Crusaders teachers. It's our preschool classroom. Um, she was my co-teacher. She's been with me for about three years, but she's also worked in all the other toddler rooms. The, Baby room. She's been with us for 20 years, so, um, but the past three years she's been in the preschool with us, so. The students and staff also had a special message for Melody. We, we love, love you, Melody! We wish Melody the best of luck in her battle with cancer and congratulations to the Hopkinton Learning Center and hosting a very successful bake sale to help a great cause. Coming up on HCAM News, we have a preview of Hiller's football. Courtney will get you up to date with upcoming HCAM programming. And in case you missed it, we will take you to National Night Out. A whole lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Do you have what it takes? Make a difference. Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller's football has made the playoffs the last three consecutive seasons and is hoping to do it once again this year. The Hillers feature a young team with a lot of speed but also have a lot of work to do as they lost a large amount of seniors to graduation last year. Despite the youth, this year's team is ready to step up and continue the stretch of playoff seasons for Hopkinton Hillers football. Hillers football finished 6-5 and five overall last year and made their third straight playoff appearance which resulted in a 28-14 loss against Duxbury. This season, the Hillers will have to adapt to a new quarterback as Jay Kelleher is gone, new bodies on the offensive and defensive line, 
as well as the loss of key wide receiver Jack Vacari and key running back Sam Lehman. Despite the losses of many key players, including the captains from last year, the new captains of the team are ready to step up. Last year we graduated a lot of kids. Uh, this year kids are really stepping up. And uh, it's really good to see everybody starting to come together, working hard in their drills. And, uh, you know, we're almost there. We're ready to go. RBs are looking good. LBs are looking good. And everybody's working hard. Uh, a lot of speed. And we're ready to go. You can definitely see the improvement from uh, from day one, just a huge jump, and I think uh, a lot of guys, like they said, a lot of guys are starting to step up, and it's looking good. All right, and can you talk about uh, what are some of the things you're working on early on here in practice? Um, I mean, really, well, like we said, we got a, long, a lot of young guys, so really just getting back to the fundamentals, kind of working the rust off, and uh, starting to get ready for to put in like more difficult things. Uh, we're doing a lot of footwork, uh, we're running a lot, getting in shape, and we're starting to install the offense and defense. It's going to be good this year, and uh, we're going to be fast. Yeah, so uh, with the offensive line, uh, we have two seniors right now, myself and uh, Charlie Dumas. And, uh, you know, we're really starting to slow things down and you know, work on uh, the footwork and the basic steps. Uh, and just working hard as a team, as a unit. I feel like every year there's, a, there's some work to do, but I uh, definitely think guys learned a lot last year from uh, the kids that graduated. Uh, it's really nice to see. And, uh, you know, kids that, kids that are, uh, we have a sophomore right now playing tackle. He, he stepped up to the plate, ready to go. All right, what about you, Isaac? Are you ready to uh, take the starting uh, running back role? Absolutely. I think uh, the whole team is very excited to start the season. We're going to be very competitive this year. And how's the transition been uh, for you? Uh, with some of the seniors that left last year? I mean, you can definitely sell, tell there's a little, it's we're starting to pick things up. Like at the beginning, it was a little slow, but the young guys, young line, they, they're they looking great right now, honestly. You can't even tell that they're, that we have like sophomores out there. They're really, they're really working hard. The fall sports season has officially started. For teams like Hillers football, they are at practice and getting ready. But for other Hillers teams, tryouts are underway. Stay tuned to the HCAM website, hcam.tv, for the latest about Hillers sports. In early August, the Hopkinton Police Department participated in National Night Out for the third straight year. The night brought residents of all ages out to learn about community safety and meet the officers who have helped make Hopkinton one of the safest communities in the country and according to SafeWise.com, the fourth safest community in Massachusetts. In case you missed it, here's the story about National Night Out. The third annual National Night Out took place at the Hopkinton Middle School field. The nationwide event allows community members of all ages to talk with their local police department and to learn about safety and what the police department does to keep the community safe. So this is our third annual National Night Out Against Crime. It's a national program all across the country with police departments building um, with the community. Um, so we got a bunch of um, people. We get the Molly Bish Center this year identifying some kids. It's kind of like a, um, a safety theme. We have our Hopkins Police SWAT unit here. We got a, um, we have um, Keep Smiling Abby Benford um, dealing with anaphylactic shocks and getting some information out on that. We have the Good Samaritans here, and um, we have the um, Hopkins Youth Services here. So just some of these um, town-wide and statewide agencies that can help the community with some stuff. They give out information, um, and just again working working together um, is, is a national light against crime. Everybody working together, we can make Hopkins safe and uh, limit the people becoming victim of crimes. Well, it's uh, basically a partnership with the community and bringing attention uh, to certain uh, things. But the main theme is, uh, you know, keeping people safe and uh, crime prevention. And uh, we certainly do a good job here in Hopkinton with that, reaching out with the community. And this is a, a, just another way of us getting together having a hamburger, a hot dog, 
listen to some music and a fun family atmosphere, but also educate the public exactly uh, you know, how to avoid being victims of crime and preventing crime. And most of all, the biggest message we try to get out when people see something suspicious, see something, say something. So it's it's quite quite an event. It's our third year uh, that we've done this in Hopkinton, and uh, it continues to grow. Officer Stephen Buckley spoke about the Hopkinton First Initiative and the goal to make Hopkinton the safest community in the state. Hey everybody, I'm Officer Buckley with the Hopkinton Police. Um, we're here at National Night Out in town with the Hopkinton Police getting together with the community. Um, we'd just like to talk about a Hopkinton First Initiative. As many of you don't know, Hopkinton is the fourth safest community in the Commonwealth, according to SafeWise. It's the community working with the police department, and we're trying to become first. So you're going to see these green bands around town, Hopkinton First. And it's just some initiatives that we're working on is uh, see something, say something in your neighborhood. Um, like it, lock it, keep it, lock your doors, lock your windows at your house and your motor vehicles out in the yard. And uh, limit the opportunity for someone to, to victimize you as a crime. So some of the uh, initiatives we got going on is uh, we're going to be up to some of the neighbors that we've targeted as being hit with vandalism and motor vehicle B&Es. We'll be up in the neighborhood's extra patrols. We'll be out there handing out pamphlets and information. Um, we're also doing threat assessments at the churches and daycare centers. And um, that's pretty much uh, some initiatives we got coming down the pike here. And um, we, we, we um, would appreciate your support and uh, give us a call if you need anything. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we have a great partnership with the Massachusetts State Police. Obviously, with the uh, start of the Boston Marathon in town, we certainly work with the Air Wing quite a bit, and they were gracious enough to come out. They have several stops because National Night takes takes place throughout the country and obviously throughout the, uh, the state. So we had the privilege of being the first stop on the list. So just like the mar marathon, it all starts here. <laughs> understand why you need a siren on a helicopter but it was kind of cool to hear it go off <laughs> get birds out of the way I guess <laughs> you can see more from National Night Out on our website hcam.tv believe it or not school will be starting soon and many programs are coming up on the HCAM channels to get you up to date with our upcoming programming here is Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, August 26th at 8 p.m., the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts recap their summers and summer in Hopkinton and discuss upcoming fall events. The whole Gateway Green project was a brainchild of Ken Driscoll, who is the pr principal of Select. Mm -hmm. um, Tim Kildoff was very involved in it, Carolyn Dykema, Scott DOT. Richardson. Scott Richardson, Western and Nurseries, so, right? Yeah. And, what, and Peter Mezzett from Western Nurseries. Yeah, but Peter did a lot. But their, right. but their brainchild of, this came up in November, and that literally we had a ribbon cutting in June. On Tuesday, August 30th at 8 p.m., the infractions perform cover versions of favorite songs with guitars, drums, and brass on the last of the Concerts on the Commons series. On Wednesday, August 31st at 7 p.m., Joe Markey and Mike Shepard share the progress being made in the school planning process and the latest ESBC update. The planning board is required to, uh, you know, uh, evaluate any commercial or public building development for, uh, again, site plan standards. Okay. So they conduct public uh, hearings to do that site plan review. So uh, it was... Uh, it was uh, a hearing that opened uh, four planning board meetings ago. Mm -hmm. it, it succeeded through four uh, planning board meetings scheduled throughout July, June. Was yeah. it June when it started? Or yeah, yeah, June. July, July 11th, I think, was the first. Okay. July 11th, 25th, and then uh, two meetings in August ending last night. We have plenty of new programming coming up in the fall season, so if you want to know all about it, visit HCAM.com dot tv slash connect to sign up for our hcam insider newsletter 
Or if you want to know about events coming up in Hopkinton, you can subscribe to our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can view more about the ballot machine testing at Town Hall and see more about Hiller's sports as we near the fall season. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thanks for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com. Smile has gone